welcome to It's Your Future. I'm Ada Harden, Volunteer Resource Specialist for AISD. It's Your Future is a program for AISD students and others who want to learn more about specific career fields. People from all walks of life will be here to share their experiences with you in our program, and we hope that our guests will help you become more aware of what you can do now to plan for the kind of future you want. You know, it's nice to listen to people and how they shaped their lives and how they made it, and listening to these people we hope will give you a better idea about how to plan your future. We have a very special person with us today on the show. I am so excited. I had an opportunity to go to his gallery and look at some of the wonderful paintings that he has done in his work. And his name is Mr. Amado Pena. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. And I know how busy you are. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a pleasure to have you stop your work and to come over and to be with us today and tell us about some of your things that you do, um, your training, your heritage, and all that stuff, and we want to just get right down and start talking about it right okay. now. I guess first I'd like to say that you are, what, an ex-teacher, should I say, of the right. district? Right. Okay. I, I was a school teacher for 16 years, oh. and uh, art was, was the subject matter, and I, I taught uh, at all fields, elementary, junior high, and high school, and one year of college, and uh, and at the same time, I, I, I was a practicing artist. I painted uh, in the mornings and <laughs> at noon and the evenings whenever I could. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I stopped altogether teaching seven years ago to just uh, try to see if I, uh, <laughs> if I could make it as an artist on a full-time basis. And it's, mm -hmm. it's proven to be a very challenging and exciting seven years. <laughs> so. So you started at an early age. You know how. how well, I remember. I can remember back when I was in the fourth grade, and oh. we had. Uh, I attended Catholic school, so we had a, a special art teacher that came in twice a week, and uh, for a couple of hours, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, would set us aside, would put everything else away, and it was time to do art. So I remember that far back doing <laughs> it, and you know, uh, growing up, it it was uh, when I look back. Doing art was uh, about as much fun as, as playing uh, oh. games and that sort of thing. It was one of those things that uh, some some of my friends thought I was kind of weird because I, I enjoyed <laughs> drawing and that sort of thing. But uh, I I just enjoyed it. It was it was a fun thing, and I mm -hmm. think that that's. Uh, I'm still enjoying it now at this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be nice to have the kind of work that you do and, and enjoy it and, and, and refer to it as a, you know, as a game, you know. I think it's interesting. Yeah, the, the, uh, it makes it, you know, I spend a lot of hours. I, you know, my normal day is a 12-hour day, and oh. really to be able to, to balance it off, you have to have certain highs and and downs on it, and so you 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 have to really enjoy it. It, mm -hmm. it can't be at least a, I don't look at it as as a laboring type yeah. of, of situation where I have I have to work real hard, intense, and so forth. So I try to balance it, and I think the balance is 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 having a commitment to it, and yet at the same time enjoy doing mm -hmm. it. And it's also very nice if you can make money off of it too. So <laughs> so that that plays a uh, a role uh, in there too. I suspect so. I suspect so. And in working, you say you worked for the district how long? I I was in, uh, I came to Austin uh, when the, uh, Anderson High School was a brand new high school. Oh. I I was the first art teacher there, oh. and so. Uh, I was there seven years before I sort of retired seven okay. years ago. Did you do your work also along with teaching too? Right. Okay. I when I was uh, this is something that was I felt very very strongly about in the sense that I was a practicing artist as well as a teacher, mm. and I took every opportunity when I was working with my kids to do my own artwork or to do artwork along with them so that they would not only f have to uh, do the exercises, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. or the, ex uh, the work in the classroom, but also they would share with me and, know, and they would know me outside of just being a teacher. I was also an artist and I, I had uh, pleasant minuses as far as my <laughs> skills were concerned and I could share those with them. Yeah. And I think that was, uh, for me, it was a, uh, an important part mm -hmm. of being able to share with the kids those experiences because mm -hmm. what I experienced in my studio the next day I would like if I had an opportunity I would I would sort of transcend mm -hmm. that 
to the kids and uh, and also maybe sometime during the course of the day something might have happened mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I would take that back with me into my studio so it was a mm -hmm. interchangeable kind of thing and uh, that's wonderful well, it really is and and it's sort of like I, I, we talked yesterday at the, at the gallery about feelings okay and you, you explained to me about how you have the feeling it just sort of comes from your brain through the arms onto right. the canvas it was Talk it's about uh, that. Well, the, th the thing that I believe is that there, it's not enough to have a skill to be able to draw. Uh, that is only one part of it. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you do have a skill, that's a plus, but it's not necessarily a requirement because mm -hmm. uh, in order to be able to interpret uh, visual things, you've got to have an understanding of those visual mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And the understanding comes from seeing and from smelling and from touching. And oh. all of these things translate back into a feeling that you have about that particular object. And then uh, when you sort of have gone through a series of things like that, you, it tells your brain <laughs> to react. <laughs> and your brain tells your hand oh. to react. And, mm -hmm. and it just, it's sort of like a cycle of things. You mm -hmm. see, you smell, and then the final, uh, the end product is your hand trying to imitate those things. Oh. So. Uh, Again, being able to translate this to the students was uh, a very exciting thing. Mm -hmm. and, and yet, for me, it was exciting because I, I practiced that in, in all of the subject matter that I was dealing with or wanted to deal with. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I had to really feel first before mm -hmm. I could even start uh, painting because I'm not one of those artists that goes out on the field mm -hmm. and and see something and then tries to imitate that by immediately sketching mm -hmm. it or mm -hmm. immediately photographing it. And if I, if I do that, if I was to go out in the field and do some photographs or do mm -hmm. uh, sketch directly uh, uh, at the thing that I'm working with, I don't bring it back in the studio and immediately try to use it mm -hmm. because I, I haven't sort of experienced the whole mm -hmm. cycle mm -hmm. of, you know, this is what it's really like yeah. and this is what it, what it how I understand it. This is what it makes me feel good or bad or it smells great or I get oh. a certain excitement about that which I'm <laughs> looking at. So it, it covers all of that before you even go into it and, and you're ready to put it on paper or on a canvas yeah. or on a print. Uh, and so in other words, you, you, you deal basically with the, what, five senses in yeah, a sense. Yeah, very much so. Okay, and, you, and that translate onto the canvas. Can you tell when a student has the feel to you know the feeling, rather than just putting it, it on the canvas. It's you. I can. You <laughs> it's, can. Yeah. I. I <laughs> it, the uh, the thing is that there's there's you can measure. Or I, uh, at least I was able to measure when a student really tried real hard to imitate. In other words, oh. if you were if there were if there was a still have to be drawn, for example, as part of the exercise, you could mm -hmm. tell by the kind of line that he was working with how tight he was or. He, or how hard he was really trying to imitate that rather than than feeling that seeing that object and or objects and and really understanding the shapes mm -hmm. because of the lines because of how they uh, I mean I'm, that's not sort of like a hundred percent proof kind of, a, <laughs> of an approach but it was uh, easier you could tell mm -hmm. just from the response that the student would have in terms of uh, how comfortable they felt with mm -hmm. drawing that particular oh. object or objects or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of communication back and forth made it. Uh, and then when, when, it, when the kids had, um, or when you saw that one or two or three really had uh, more skills than somebody else, for example, um, and the being able to translate these mm -hmm. these images became very natural for them and sort of mm -hmm. you know very easy to draw this line or whatever uh, mm -hmm. then we sort of reinforced their um, uh, the exercise and mm -hmm. may put a little bit more pressure on it make mm -hmm. it not so easy that sort of thing so <laughs> so it was kind of neat to be able to do that you're talking about lines I, I'm, I was so fascinated on yesterday when we walked in in your studio and mm -hmm. you were you're working you, you there was just a plain blank piece of canvas. And, and you started, you know, I guess making your lines or right. sketches. Sketching in the, the image on it. Yeah. Talk about that. And, and where do you, the ideas, 
Well, the uh, the whole the, this is one of the things again that my 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 students used to sort of it used to blow them away because I didn't <laughs> for them one of the things that they complained about was mm -hmm. what do I draw what mm -hmm. you know how do I start kind mm -hmm. of thing and and they would see me just sort of let it flow and. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there was an image on the paper, and they couldn't oh. comprehend that it was. And I had to, time and time again, I had to tell them. I said, you know, it's, uh, it's something that I, they're images that are part of me. They're images that are part of my life. There are, mm -hmm. if there, if people are involved, which about ninety nine percent of my no. paintings <laughs> have people in them. Mm -hmm. There are people that I that I know. There are people that I that I have been in contact with. There are uh, people that are uh, historically part of my culture. There mm -hmm. are uh, and and not just the people, but events that are uh, v very basically they're part of me and my life mm -hmm. back then, uh, <laughs> two years ago or oh. immediately, and so. When you you sort of have a a library a, a, a record of those things in your head mm -hmm. and and, and you, you know when you're ready when you're ready to start you yeah. just sort of bring them bring them reality. out yeah. <laughs> and and here they they become part of this drawing or this painting mm -hmm. and uh, and that's sort of the easy part when you you understand the images and you understand that message that you're trying to to put across, mm -hmm. and when that becomes the, the the heart of the of the drawing or the painting, then to bring in line mm -hmm. and to bring in <laughs> color and to bring in the other elements that mm -hmm. are what I call uh, artistic uh, uh, problems or uh, or uh, now dealing with uh, with uh, drawing or the painting and its artistic content. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's what I know as an artist, what I feel as an artist, how lines should be drawn or how lines should be interpreted mm -hmm. or how the space should be used or what colors should be used. And, and to blend all of those things with the subject matter, then it becomes sort of like creating something, <laughs> like building something and then seeing the end product is, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a combination of both. That's I feel wonderful. that, uh, uh, again, it's, it's not difficult to put across the images because again I uh, 15 20 years ago I decided that that the source of what I chose to do had to do with what I knew best which was mm -hmm. myself and my culture and my people and so <laughs> um, it in as many years it's not enough just to sort of recall mm -hmm. uh, where you come from and to uh, to recall those things that are important uh, because mm -hmm. as an artist you've got um, you're sort of responsible for that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, the spectrum of, of artists is so varied, you know, and uh, I consider myself as a, as a sort of a historian in the sense that, that the images that I choose to, to work with are things that I know and mm -hmm. are things that are part of my culture and are things that are part of another culture that are close to me or I relate to and those mm -hmm. sorts of things. So it's, it's, it's sort of a... Uh, it goes beyond maybe the artist who does just a landscape or oh, or yeah. paints wildlife or something like that because it I, the human element is very very important and so um, I'm constantly you know, <laughs> and you doing do that. so you do so many um, I'm 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 reminded that sometime back when you first started your work and painting and whatever you didn't have any detail is there right. some reason for that well the, the whole Again, the, the 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 imagery has changed, has grown oh, okay. from from, uh, uh, and this is a, a process. This is a process by which, as you work with the same image over and over, it grows. It sort of develops. Oh, okay. And the very first, uh, the very very first uh, images that I work with had almost no detail on their faces. For Why example, was that? Why was that? well, it was not. Um, my intent was again to portray. Um, a storytelling type of imagery, oh, okay? okay? And when I chose to do that, I was more concerned with everything that was going on, the activities, the environment, rather than the personality. Uh, oh. And I gave, for example, I would give 
the woman a personality to, you know, to differentiate between a male and a female, for example. The woman would have a particular, her hair would be flowing, for example, or um. would be styled in a certain way. Uh -huh. But the facial expression or the facial features would be the same as in the male, except oh. the male would have, again, a different wardrobe or a different uh, hairstyle or something like that. Because uh -huh. I, I didn't, I believe that there wasn't, it wasn't necessary to give uh, a personalities were not important mm -hmm. because it had to do with the whole spectrum of the mm -hmm. people. Everything that was going on was more important than who it was right. that was taking part. And in just this. making a statement is that that's basically right. the storytelling, what yeah, uh -huh. the whole thing. And there were again, it was what was going on in the painting. Things mm -hmm. like the birthday party or. Uh, baking bread or, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, I noticed you had a lot of uh, the women. You paint a lot of women. There's a lot of women There's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know I, that we're beautiful and all, but I just wondered if there's a special reason no, that you do I, that. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, activities that the that the women do mm -hmm. that the males don't and so I, I really <laughs> like don't like walking think, around with pots on their heads. Well, why, the heads. Why you know it's uh it's like the it's the water bearer that she is the one who goes out and brings oh, water in and okay. and carries uh, the water in this in his jars and oh. and and again it's a it's an activity it's a function when. Uh, back in the old days when you needed water, you went down to the creek and you picked up water and you brought it home, you know, uh -huh. and that sort of thing. So I went out <laughs> to the well and uh, not that the males didn't do that. It's just that this was uh, women's chores. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you chose clay, I noticed, you know, pottery, you know, because of something about back to the earth. Well, there's, that. again, uh, in in the whole process of, of identifying the culture and... and mm -hmm. You know the different spectrums of that, the uh, religious and the uh, and the supernatural mm -hmm. and the philosophical mm -hmm. and all of those things mm -hmm. are all tied in. Yeah. And one of the things that is very important to us is is Mother Earth, which is, mm -hmm. you know, we are re respect for the earth and and you know we uh, we plant our crops and you know we have to treat the Mother Earth with kindness and mm -hmm. she gives us back this mm -hmm. fruit of plenty, whatever and. Uh, uh, one of the uh, other elements that uh, how, for example, the people used to uh, partake in the same type of, of, of event was uh, taking Mother Earth and shaping her, taking her and making her into this clay and then shaping it into this, into this <laughs> object, this bowl, oh, for example, that became... Yeah. Uh, uh, a very practical object. We used it for carrying water. We mm -hmm. used it for storing our uh, uh, corn and oh. and that sort of thing. And and uh, and then obviously the the next thing was uh, to make this bowl with all of these beautiful designs on it and sort of say we took you from the <laughs> earth and we're giving you back in this beautiful form. And you See, know this yeah. is as it's well beautiful. as being able to document part of our history in those designs that were placed in these bowls. So mm -hmm. it, it's sort of a, a beautiful cycle, mm -hmm. a beautiful circle that, that beautiful. again, as an artist, you, you find those small things that are, that you can make those statements mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And I feel responsible for that. And, and I don't want to be a, always constantly reminding people that that is why this is done. So I, mm -hmm. you know, I, as long as I know and I understand it, then that's, mm -hmm. that's great. Do you find people having difficulty in understanding your painting? Has, <laughs> has anyone it actually... Varies. It varies, it really? varies. I, I, but, you know, I think that has to do with, with there's no guarantees that how people are going to respond oh. to your work. And uh, I, I, I find it very, very intriguing <laughs> to, to find so many mm -hmm. different interpretations. and. Mm -hmm. You know, the bottom line to all of that is the fact that, that if I set out to say something with the paintings or the drawings, as long as there is some response coming back, then mm -hmm. I've sort of fulfilled my obligation to, say, mm -hmm. communicate something. Mm -hmm. Some people see way beyond what I started out to do, which was <laughs> great. Mm -hmm. and, but I think artwork has to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, visual things have to do that. Mm -hmm. And if they don't do any of 
if there's no response, then so I sort of <laughs> fail. So. Oh, well, you get plenty of responses, I'm <laughs> sure. I know when, uh, when I visited you while you were working, you showed me about eight unfinished paintings. Mm -hmm. Well, I shouldn't say. Well, there they were, were drawings. They yeah. were drawings. Yeah, unfinished drawings. And then you do that many, and then you go back and you put the color in. Right. Is there a reason for that? The, the there is. I this is again my choice to uh, to really how to get how involved am I going to get on the pieces that I'm going to work with and and one of the one of the ways that I that I see uh, for example growth which is I always try to do better the next time and the next time mm -hmm. is to see it's not enough there isn't enough room. For, one of the things that I justify is there isn't <laughs> enough room in this piece of paper to do all of the things yeah. that I want to do. So yeah. I sort of go to the carry next, yeah, carry over oh. because some lines are more exciting than other lines yeah. and some lines have more potential than other lines or shapes. So I find that I can satisfy my needs to deal with that oh. by going from one piece to another piece. And you don't forget when you get back to the first one? No. Oh gosh! No. And then when it comes back, when the series is done, like uh, in the last couple of days, I've been working on just the drawings. Then when it's time to apply color, then I do the same process again, where I'll finish the putting color on one mm -hmm. piece, and then I go to the next one, and then I go to the next one until they're all f finished. filled in, and then come back and finish the details on all of them. And they're so beautiful. How do you select your colors and? And coordinate them so beautifully. I, I don't know. <laughs> Is that feelings? <laughs> that's feelings. Yeah, that's feelings, and and it also has to do with, with uh, my ability as an artist to understand mm -hmm. color, to see how mm -hmm. color works. Obviously, that, you know, there are technical things that that are still part of that. But uh, I want to feel like the choices are because I, I understand color and. Uh, mm -hmm. And they seem to work, and mm -hmm. you know, and I know if there are some colors that I don't like, that uh, <laughs> I, I choose to put them aside. I mean, I'll get them away from me oh. as far as I can, so I won't be in touch with them. Yeah. So. Well, it was interesting that you did your sketches in, uh, you know, in black, and you said that they could be painted over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's oh. just part of the process where once I apply color, I redrew the, I'll redo the drawing again, oh. and see maybe something else happening as a result of that. So mm -hmm. uh, that. Again, it's when I deal with the work, and uh, it's fun mm -hmm. because I'm not saying that it's just sort of the shot in the dark and just mm -hmm. wait to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's, it's nice to see it two or three times over. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of like trying to choose a wardrobe in the morning. <laughs> you know, you can't figure yeah. out what color matches what, and you're sort mm -hmm. of taking taking things back and forth. So uh, the painting is sort of like that. You mm -hmm. change this, you change that, you, you, know, you move this, you move that, and until you find a, a comfortable medium and you're, you're happy with it. I think it's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> I'm still just excited. It can be, I love your ring. <laughs> Tell me, is there some significance about the, the, uh, the uh, turquoise? I noticed you have a collection of jewelry at, at the gallery. At the gallery. And well, you don't the, make it, but there's well, we. The nice thing about being in the situation that I'm in, and it uh, going from being an active artist in a studio, uh, we chose to also establish our our gallery, and as a result of having a gallery, mm -hmm. uh, we it gave me an opportunity to see other art forms mm -hmm. and to be able to bring oh, those art yeah. forms and to visit with other artists and to visit with craftsmen that yeah. are doing either jewelry or ceramics or weavings and that sort of thing and it's given me uh, uh, another uh, sort of a, a, on a different um, I'm not an artist dealing with an artist but I'm a dealer dealing with an artist and so it, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it sort of reverses the roles. And you sort of have a what and uh, on hands uh, what should I say input on the day-to-day -day operation right. too. You do yeah, that? I do that, right. Oh. I, I try to get involved with my the other part of, of the art, uh, which is the art business, which is the retail. And how many do you have, though? You we have, have four start, galleries. Four galleries, mm -hmm. okay. We started oh. with one gallery in, uh, in a real small, in a real small place. Room. You and showed in me. in seven that. years, we, we have a gallery in Taos, New Mexico, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and two here in Austin. So oh. uh, it's, again, it's, it's sort of a nice... 
to be able to have be involved in that situation because it gives me a different perspective mm -hmm. as an artist who is trying to make it in the commercial field mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, because it, art is a business and yeah. mm -hmm. and people um, you know a lot of times people don't see that part mm -hmm. but oh. uh, uh, especially if if you're an, <laughs> especially if you're an artist and you haven't experienced that then it's real difficult to to really ask the question well you know what do I do with my artwork? You know, mm -hmm. how, do, how does it get, uh, if I wanted to make a living out of uh, my artwork, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. And when I decided that I was going to start selling my artwork, those were the kinds of questions that I wanted answered. And <laughs> I'm one of those people that not necessarily, you know, expected somebody else to do it for you. Mm -hmm. I went out and tried to mm -hmm. find the best solution, made a lot of mistakes, but, yeah. you know, made a lot of good uh, uh, made a lot of good decisions, and as a result of that, uh, we're able to understand mm -hmm. uh, the business of art, and and being able to understand that not just gave me an opportunity mm -hmm. to make a good living out of it, but also to uh, work with other people and see That's where they what were I coming ask from. You. I want to ask you: Do you do all those paintings? I do all my own work. All, all your right. work. Do you have anyone else there help you? We have. Do you? We have a staff of 23 people that work for us, oh, okay. and. Uh, uh, my direct uh, staff is, I have three people that work directly with me that assist me oh. in doing, for example, my prints. They assist oh. me in doing that. And uh, where I used to do 100% of the work, now I have some assistance that do, uh, so, <laughs> I, that I can, I, so that I, I can spend my time doing some other things. I so. know, I can't see that you could do all that, but you do have, can you tell the difference in the reproductions or right. the we're, we're, uh, one, of, one of the nice things that, that uh, we encountered as part of this business is the, our ability to do posters, and, oh. and which is another, another realm altogether as far as the art world is concerned. And, mm -hmm. Uh, it, it gives us an exposure that uh, would, we wouldn't be able to, to have if it wasn't for the reproductions, mm -hmm. which was the posters. Oh, yeah. uh, we sell our posters are all over the country as well as in Europe and Australia and oh. China and Japan and, and so in Austin. So, and Austin. <laughs> so uh, oh, by being able so to wonderful. do those, mm -hmm. it gives us that, that range that it would be real hard to. To accomplish it. Would you believe our time is almost up? I, I have think so have. much more I need to talk <laughs> to you about. <laughs> but I need to ask you this, and that would be, what would be your advice then to young people who are looking at uh, the art area as a career to go into? What would you tell them? How would you advise them? Well, you know, I, I think that there's, what I would tell, that's one of the things I regret about not being able to finish off my yeah. teaching and yeah. doing this at the same time. We is need that you. <laughs> there is, uh, there's, there is a, art is a real world and it is just as legitimate a, uh, a career yeah. as any other career. Mm -hmm. um, the number one thing that, that needs to be looked at is, is how much are you dedicated to it and how, you know, how important is it to you yeah. and to find out what really is out there from as many different sources as there are out there because that's really how it's going to get done and to practice every day. <laughs> and work hard and that's your advice. Mm -hmm. Gee, we're so happy to have you. <laughs> it's you. been such a wonderful pleasure to have you with us. Thank and you. I want to remind our students that listen, listening to Mr. Pena, it's been a wonderful experience for me. And if you have an opportunity to go and visit the gallery, please do that, because I know you'll be excited about it as I was. But it's hard work. He told me he was up this morning at 4.30, 5 o'clock, uh, in the studio working. But it's worth it, because it's your future. Thank you.